Hello and welcome to Newsbreak. I'm your host, Nick Steffens. Coming up, Mount Pleasant won a thriller of a softball game. The first today's top stories. Mount Pleasant High School bid farewell to Jim and Marlene DePriest, who conducted their final concert as the music band and choir directors after over 30 years of dedicated service. The couple nurtured various musical programs at the school, including marching band, color guard, jazz band, and chamber choir, providing numerous opportunities for students. During the spring concert, the DePriest recognized the hard work of their students and presented awards, including the prestigious John Philip Sousa Award for Extraordinary Mus Musicianship, which went to Ethan Sexauer, a talented and humble student. Marlene DePriest also awarded the Iowa Choral Directors Association Award to Brandon Burtlow and Jaden Hausch, seniors who demonstrated exceptional, and dedica exceptional dedication and leadership. The evening also featured a memorial award presented to the parents of A.J. Becker, a former student and gifted musician who passed away in 2022. The music department completed its lighting system in A.J.'s memory, and his parents received a plaque expressing grat gratitude. The event concluded with the music boosters presenting Jim and Marlene with a retirement gift and heartfelt speeches, followed by the couple leading their choirs and bands in a final performance. Over 25 local businesses and organizations came together to bring the enchanting land of Oz to downtown Washington during the 2023 Kids Fest on Friday evening. The community collaborated to organize this popular event, which involved various activities and attractions. Washington hospitals and clinics encouraged local schools to participate in coloring and drawing contests with the artwork displayed at Marshall Furniture and Flooring and the Washington Evening Journal office. Washington Middle School played a significant role in creating the magical atmosphere, preparing Central Park and performing musical numbers directed by choir director Kaylee Wegner. The Washington Community Theater's cast of The Wizard of Oz also performed a med medley. The event featured entertainment such as an absolute science show, a performance by 12-year-old magician Kaylee Rogers, pony rides, a bounce house face painting, and informational booths promoting health, wellness, and safety for children. The Washington Fire Department educated children about fire safety, while Faith Baptist Church engaged them in physical activities and offered invitations to summer sports camps. The Washington Police Department provided quieter gifts, such as stickers and coloring books. The event received praise from attendees for its community involvement and growth over the years. Iowa's 10th Regional Planning Affiliation and collaboration with the East Central Iowa Council of Governments and local government representatives is working on an active transportation plan for the region's trails, bike lanes, and sidewalks. The plan will serve as a guidebook for local governments, helping them prioritize and invest in walking and biking infrastructure. It will also be a valuable resource for grant applications and funding opportunities. The groups have extended the feedback gathering period due to an unexpectedly high number of survey responses. The survey is open to res residents of specific counties and non-metro areas. The findings will go beyond recreational use as walking and biking paths are considered dual use infrastructure, benefiting both recreational activities and daily commuting. By creating an interconnected network of paths and trails, it can provide transportation op options for those without vehicles, filling transportation trans transit gaps, and offering equal opportunities for mobility. In a ribbon cutting ceremony held on Tuesday, real estate brokerage Homegirl Realty LLC celebrated the opening of its office in March of this year. The event was attended by friends, family members, and chamber ambassadors. The brokerage, led by broker associates Sharla Howard and Heather Merrick, along with managing broker Melissa Westfall, boasts a collective real estate experience of over 80 years. Expressing their joy, Howard highlighted the fulfillment they felt in pursuing their own interests and emphasized the support of their families. Westfall expressed pride in being part of a business that was born out of the vision of three friends. Additionally, she noted the advantage of already owning the building where the office is located. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll take a look at the weather and sports. Since 1905, Kelowna Cooperative Technology Company has helped our community stay connected with the latest advancements in clear, dependable telecommunications services. KCTC provides rural Iowans with access to high-speed fiber internet, as well as phone, television, computer repair, and cybersecurity solutions. We're also proud supporters of local organizations and area schools within the community. KCTC, keeping Kelowna connected. At the Capper Auto Group, we put our customers' needs first and understand that everyone is as different as the vehicle they select. We offer new Ford, Chevrolet, Buick, GMC, Jeep, Chrysler, Dodge, and Ram vehicles in a friendly environment that puts you in the driver's seat. When it comes to service, we maintain factory-trained technicians and competitive pricing. The Capper Auto Group still believes that service after the sale provides the best customer experience. Come see the Capper experience for yourself. Hospice 
isn't a place, it's a type of care that focuses on living. Servicing a seven county area, the Hospice of Washington County staff of nurses, social work, hospice aides, spiritual and grief support, volunteers, music and massage therapists are able to provide free end of life care where the patient lives. We write wills, give consent for organ donation, but rarely is there a plan for what we would want the final phase of our lives. At Hospice of Washington County, we encourage our patients to be in charge of their health care decisions while maintaining quality of life. I've been in health care for many years. I know that Tammy's that person who wants to help others and take care of us. She knows the health care business and wants to take care of others. Hello and welcome back to Newsbreak. I'm your host, Nick Steffens. We have your five-day forecast coming up, but first, obituaries. Herbert R. Phipps of Washington passed away on May 21st at the age of 83. A celebration of life will be held at 2 p.m. May 26th at the Jones and Dean Funeral Home. That was obituaries. It is now time for your five-day forecast. It's going to be a hot one today with a high of 85 degrees and mostly sunny skies. Tomorrow, temperatures will fall to 74 degrees and it'll be mostly sunny. On Friday, temperatures will rise back up to 79 degrees and there'll be clear skies. Looking at the weekend, it'll be mostly sunny and 83 on Saturday. And finally on Sunday, it'll be 86 degrees and partly cloudy. We're gonna take another quick break and when we come back, we'll take a look at sports. Federation Bank is a locally owned bank providing award-winning customer service. We believe that we are more than just a federation of banks, but a federation of communities serving Brighton, Richland, Wellman, Washington, Iowa. Federation Bank's highly skilled staff is here to make sure you are able to accomplish your personal and professional goals, whatever they may be. Federation Bank, your family bank. Family owned and operated by Andy and Sarah Ross, Ross Auto has been your vehicle repair and maintenance headquarters since 1935. We specialize in all makes of cars and light duty trucks. With our variety of available services, let us help you keep rolling and your vehicle operating efficiently. Services include general auto repair, alignments, brakes, fuel injection, and more. Schedule your appointment today at 319-653-5656. That's 319-653-5656. You know, it's not a question of what all you have and so on with your life. It's who is in your life and how much you care for them and how much they care for you. And Tammy definitely cares. Welcome back to Newsbreak. I'm your host, Nick Steffens. It is now time for sports. In a thrilling softball match on Monday night, the Mount Pleasant Panthers secured their first victory of the season by defeating Holy Trinity Catholic with a score of 6-4. The Panthers demonstrated an efficient offense and solid defense throughout the game. In the opening innings, they quickly got their bats going and prevented the Crusaders from gaining momentum. Freshman Sage Burchett started with a single, followed by senior Ella McNamee's RBI double, which brought Burchett home. The Panthers extended their lead when freshman Addison Clark nearly hit a home run, resulting in a 2-0 advantage. However, errors plagued Mount Pleasant in the third inning, allowing Holy, Trin Holy Trinity to narrow the gap to 2-1. The game remained tight with both teams exchanging runs. Mount Pleasant managed to hold on to their lead and sealed their victory with a solid pitching from Jolene Martin. Clark and McNamee were instrumental at the plate, each contributing two RBIs and a pair of doubles. Martin showcased her versatility by going 2-3 for three at the plate and pitching seven innings with five strikeouts. The Panthers celebrated their triumph and acknowledged the importance of continuous improvement in practice. Highland senior Ethan Paisley was perfect on Monday night as the Huskies knocked off Washington in a battle of neighboring schools. Paisley and the Huskies defeated the Demons 5-0 in what was the first matchup between the two teams since 2016. Paisley threw 81 pitches and struck out 13 Washington batters in his perfect game. Highland's offense scored two runs in the second inning and one each in the third, fourth, and fifth. Tyler Thompson went 2-for-3 with a double and two RBIs to lead the Huskies. Paisley and Riker Miller each had an RBI. 
Washington's Isaac Vetter threw three innings and gave up three earned runs to get tagged with a loss on the mound. Luke Bean Blossom gave up two earned runs over two innings. Ethan Patterson threw one shutout inning. Now, as the news for Southeast Iowa, I've been your host, Nick Steffens. This has been your news break, and I'll see you next time.